Welcome again this Thursday morning as we continue with the discussion in chapter number one. We are yet to finish this chapter and then we can proceed to the next other chapters. Uh, yesterday we talked about being filled with the knowledge of his will, uh, knowledge, uh, spiritual understanding, and also being filled with all wisdom. We talked about being walking worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, and then being fruitful in every good work. We talked about increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power. And then we will continue today and then see how far we will go. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and we bless your holy name because of the grace that you have showered us with this day. King of glory, have your way. As we study the book of Colossians, dear Father, I pray that you will open up our minds, our spirits, our hearts, that we may comprehend scripture because this is the will of God for our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. We talked about being strengthened with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering. Long, all patience and long suffering. One of the components that makes faith be what it is, is that faith works patience. Anything that propels impatience, anything that propels an individual towards moving in a path, that does not reflect the patience of God is some actually becoming a wild horse. And therefore, I pray that we shall be able to understand what it means to walk with God because without patience, we are bordering on a very dangerous ground. Let, let uh, there's something in the book of James that allow me to jump right there so that we understand this. Uh, it says this, Verse number four, uh, or let me just read chapter number one, verse one. James, a bond servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greetings. All right? That, those are the opening remarks of James. We are not looking at the book of James today. But verse two says this, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your Faith, are you seeing that? The testing of your faith, because faith works patience. The testing of your faith produces patience. The testing of your faith produces patience. Verse 4, but let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect, complete, lacking nothing. What does patience do? It makes us perfect complete, lacking nothing. Why did I read that verse 4 of James? Because when you're filled with the knowledge of his will, when you're filled with all wisdom, when you're filled with spiritual understanding, there is that aspect that you have just read that once you're strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, it says for all patience. What is this all patience that is alluding to? The patience that is produced having gone through diverse kinds of testings of your faith that makes you perfect, complete, and lacking nothing. So, once we have got that intact, there is now the doctrine that many people don't want to hear, especially believers, long suffering. We need to understand the purpose of suffering for us to live according to the will of God. Because you cannot divorce suffering from the will of God. You can't. I wish I could have said that that can be possible. It is impossible. You can never divorce suffering from the will of God. Because for it to have this legitimized, legitimized, the legitimizing aspect of it, the pathway through which that makes it legit, is the pathway of suffering. Otherwise, if we got everything out of a silver platter, lessons will never be learned. We will never learn critical lessons. So it says, with long suffering, and then it says as you're going through suffering, but it has to be marinated with joy. 
with joy. Then, not only with joy, verse 12 says, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. So there is what we receive as the saints in the light because when, when our when giving thanks, thanksgiving is an attitude that we embody whenever we are going through bad situations, we are giving thanks. The Bible says giving thanks in all ways, in all situations. So sometimes the, God will be like, why, uh, uh, or many people would ask, why are you thankful when you are in a bad situation? Because it is an attitude. It is a posture that we embrace. When things are working, we are grateful. When things are not working, we are grateful. Because it is an attitude in itself of gratitude. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. 13. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. He has delivered us from the power of darkness. Jesus' agenda was to seek and save that which was lost. When Paul is writing the uh, right, he, he see this epistle to the Colossian church, it's bringing an aspect of a certain concept called translation. We have been translated from darkness and then translated into light. He has moved us from darkness into marvelous light, he calls it, because his dwelling place, his dwelling place is the place called marvelous light. So, for us to know, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. Psalm 91, verse 1 and 2. And so, once we understand this concept of the secret place, we now walk towards understanding that it was not of our own. Left on our own, we would have desired to stay in darkness. But when Jesus died on the cross, he conveyed us, translated us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the son of his love. How did he do it? Because in him, he used the blood to redeem us. So moving out of darkness, the power, you see, realize this, power uh, darkness has power. Let me read for you Psalm 91 so that you understand what I'm talking about. Psalm 91 is a very interesting psalm. Psalm 91. Uh, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Lord, of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver you. He says she has, he, has, he has delivered us from the power of darkness. He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. Because a snare is something that is not kept. If you, are you intend to trap the mice, you don't put a snare in a place visible to humans or visible to that party. You put it strategically in a place that is hidden. So it is with the enemy. He ensnares. He ensnares. He makes sure that he puts something that will just trap you into that. He says, he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with, with, with his feathers and under his wings he shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. I was going to verse 5. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night. In other words, if you are in darkness, you will always be afraid 
of the terror of the night. What is this terror of the night that causes insomnia? What is this terror by night that makes you not to see beyond the confusion around your life? You are worried about your children, worried about your business, worried about what shall become of you in the event things don't work. Don't work. In the event the company closes down, what will become of you? In the event you're fired, in the event there is sickness, in the event there is a misfortune, what can you do when the foundations of the righteous are shaken? What can the righteous do? So it becomes another terror by night. Unless the Lord watch over a city, the watchmen watch over it in vain. It is in, it is in vain to wake up early and to sit up late only to eat the bread of sorrow. Psalm 127 verse 3. And sometimes you sit up late wondering what shall become of your son, what shall become of your daughter, what shall become of your marriage. You are worried. That is terror by night. You go to bed, you can't sleep. You literally can't sleep. And then again, you never slept at night. Then he says, nor of the arrow that flies by day. So you didn't sleep at night because of the terror by night. Then now there is another arrow that is flying by day. Terrorizing your peace. Terrorizing your peace. And then he says this again, my goodness. Nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness. So, so pestilence can walk. Pestilence can walk in darkness. We are talking about being delivered from the power of darkness. Pestilence is walking in darkness. And then he says this. Nor of the destruction that lays waste in noonday. You didn't sleep at night because of the terror of the night. Now the arrow that flies by day and then there is a pestilence that walks in darkness and then there is the destruction that lays waste at noonday. And then verse 7 says a thousand may fall at your side. The contingency that one individual should have is that one can put a thousand to flight, two, ten thousand. In other words, one, a thousand will fall at your side, ten thousand on your right side. But the beauty about the promise of God is this, but it shall not come near you. Why shall it not come near you? Because he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of his love. I pray that God will deliver you from any agenda of the enemy this day. I pray that the plans of the enemy shall not see the light of day. They will not gather in multitudes because he has delivered us from the power of darkness, conveyed us, translated us into the marvelous light of his kingdom and the son of his love. And then he says, in him, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin. Whatever the enemy intended for evil, I pray it shall turn around for your good. Because we are talking about Jesus, the Lordship of Jesus Christ, the purpose of Jesus Christ's ministry, dying, buried, resurrecting, exalted Christ. He purchased our salvation, translated us from the power of darkness into the kingdom of the Son of His love in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin. This is a very interesting read. He says he is the image of the invisible God, talking about his deity now. He is the image of the invisible God, verse 15, the firstborn of all creation, for by him all things were created that are in heaven, that are on earth, visible or invisible, whether thrones or dominions, principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him all things consist, and he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn of the dead, that all things may have, that in all things he may have preeminence. I pray that your life will be characterized by the presence of God. I pray that your life will be characterized by his preeminence. Whether you turn to the right or to the left, you will never walk in confusion because the Holy Spirit will always whisper to you, this is the way, walk ye 
in it. Why? Because you have been translated from the powers of darkness and conveyed into the kingdom of his son. I pray that you will understand the concept of redemption because he never redeemed you to come and leave you to die and function here. No, he never redeemed you from alcohol for you to come and get into another struggle of becoming a victim of life. No, he never redeemed you from all these things to come and create an embarrassment out of your life. No, that is not our God. In him we have redemption the forgiveness of sin, through whom we walk and live and have our being. God bless you. Let's meet again tomorrow as we attempt to finish chapter 1. We thank you, dear Father, for your grace. We thank you for your mighty hand upon us. Thank you for delivering us from the powers of darkness and conveying us into the kingdom of God the kingdom of his marvelous light. We thank you, dear Father, because we have redemption in you. We thank you, dear Father, because we are walking victoriously. We are not walking and living as victims, but we are walking as living according to your will for our lives. This I pray in Jesus' name. See you again tomorrow as we attend to wind down chapter number one. God bless you.